Well, George Washington is, of course, our famous man of action. He had reading, writing, and arithmetic when his father died. And really, after that, he didn't have much formal schooling. And so throughout this very active life, he was regularly acquiring books to help supplement what he was learning by doing. So, and that uh, story of, of each book in his library really helps get at the man himself. Welcome to the Secrets of Washington's Archives. In celebration of the George Washington Presidential Library's 10th anniversary, we're bringing you behind the scenes in the Mars Rare Books and Manuscripts Suite to show you the treasures of Washington's library. Today, we're looking at a very special book indeed. This Spanish edition of Don Quixote was a gift to George Washington from the Spanish ambassador, Diego de Gardoqui. While this book was considered to be one of the finest printed editions available anywhere in the world in the 18th century, it also carries with it a special story about George Washington and the Constitutional Convention. Joining me here today to talk about this rare and special book is our very own CEO and President, Dr. Douglas Bradburn, who, I should also note, was the original founding director of the George Washington Presidential Library. This book was a gift to George Washington from Diego Gardoki. To start us off, can you tell us who Gardoki was? Well, Gardoki is a Basque. Uh, he's a Spaniard uh, from Bilbao, and he's a merchant. Uh, he's actually very much involved in the early phases of the American Revolution. Garnocchi is really the first, we think of ambassador of the Spanish crown to the new nation after independence. Uh, the Spanish relationship with the United States is a little complicated. Um, they hadn't recognized independence until the, the peace treaty. And, uh, and they had different interests in North America. And so Gardoki is there to really secure Spanish interests, some of which were against a lot of opinions of the new citizens. And in 1787, I believe Gardoki wrote George Washington during the convention asking him for a special audience, which George Washington granted. And it was after a visit with Ben Franklin that Gardoki sends George Washington this book in particular. Gardoki's trying to make sure that the Spanish maintain control of the Mississippi River. He believes George Washington, he knows George Washington is the most influential man in the country, despite him being an independent citizen. And so Gardoki sending this present, uh, there had been many presents from the Spanish uh, to George Washington. Uh, and so the book is, is critical because, you know, on the one hand, you can see it as a, you know, a venal attempt by Gardoki to get something from George Washington. But on the other, I think, it, you know, it, it speaks to, you know, the enthusiasm Washington had when he first saw a copy of this book at uh, Benjamin Franklin's house. Why would he give George Washington a book as opposed to any of the other gifts that he could give? Well, I mean, the Spanish had given George Washington other gifts. He'd had uh, uh, two giant uh, jack stock, uh, which Washington would end up breeding. Of course, one of them died en route. The one that did come, royal gift, was by the permission of the king. He also gave him a suit of uh, vicuna wool from South America, vicuna wool, which Washington would turn into a suit. So there were other things Washington had had received graciously uh, from Gardoki and others. Uh, and so this book, I think, speaks to, you know, that moment in Franklin's house. I mean, there's a great letter that the ambassador writes to Washington at Mount Vernon when he presented the book in which he noted uh, that Washington said he had not seen a copy of, of this Cervantes edition. And, uh, and this edition was really special. It had new typography, new ink, new printing. It was considered sort of state of the art at the time. And Franklin, it seems, was showing it off to people who, always, who visited him. We have actually many letters from Franklin that's about people visiting Franklin saying about how much Franklin admired this book. And Franklin, of course, was a printer himself. So that is a pretty important opinion yeah. right there. Yeah, Franklin is a printer. He loves innovation in the print line and, and other things as well. Uh, and he's certainly showing off the skill in this volume, uh, which, which it is still extraordinary uh, to look at. And so the Spanish ambassador mentioned that it is, you know, all from the best materials, all from Spain. I only wish that you could enjoy it because it's not in English. George Washington didn't read Spanish. And of course, this is Madrid 1780 edition. It's an extraordinary set. Uh, but we know, uh, well, that we know that George Washington was able to work his way through Cervantes. One of the nice things about that visit with Franklin, uh, you know, is I, I like to imagine that Franklin pointed out when Washington mentioned he didn't know Cervantes of this book, Franklin would have pointed out that there's a new edition by Tobias Smollett, London, 
1786, um, which was probably at this such and such print shop. And George Washington purchased that book in English uh, on the same day that he signed the Constitution, September 17th, 1787, which is really extraordinary. That is extraordinary that once the convention wrapped up, the first thing he did, he went out and he purchased a copy yeah. of Don Quixote shortly after that visit with Gardoki and Ben Franklin. And we don't often think of George Washington as a big novel reader, but what do you think might have attracted him to a story like Don Quixote? Well, that's a really good question because Washington doesn't ruminate on, on literature as we, one would perhaps like, but um, he was at this period in his life reading more uh, bell letters. He'd always read travel literature. Um, he'd acquired Gil Blas. He'd acquired some other sort of, um, you know, picaresque novels. And, and this was a classic. You know, I think this, uh, my sense is this idea in the Franklin conversation is that Washington really wasn't very familiar with Cervantes. And he was self-educated. And he always wanted to make sure that he knew things that he was supposed to know. If you want to learn more about George Washington, the Spanish, and the special gifts that were given to him, be sure to check out our podcast companion, The Secrets of Washington's Archives, available wherever you download your favorite podcasts or at georgewashingtonpodcast.com.